Good morning. If you haven't yet had a chance to take a vacation, go somewhere, or if you don't think you're going to have time to this summer, like I don't think I will, um, how about taking a spiritual vacation? Have you ever thought of that? A spiritual vacation. I see a lot of nods there. Go somewhere that is life-changing. Expand your horizons. Do something new, a spiritual adventure. Be happy. Come back, refreshed, renewed. Isn't that what vacations are supposed to be for anyway? Where could we possibly go that would meet all those criteria? <coughs> Nobody has an idea. Well, there's Tahiti. <laughs> Try Tahiti. Beautiful Pacific Island. You could perhaps learn a little French while you're there. Life is certainly peaceful. It would be very easy to meditate. Hmm, but 30-hour trip, it costs a fortune. Tourists running around all over the place looking for lattes and souvenirs and grass skirts to buy. And what do you get when you return? Probably lost luggage, credit card debt, and some good iPhone shots that none of your friends will look at. Hmm, maybe they're somewhere slightly closer. Corsica, beautiful Mediterranean island south of France, only a nine hour trip. Clear water, calm atmosphere, so relaxing for reading spiritual books on the beach. Relatively few tourists. I wonder why. Oops, the Corsicans hate foreigners. They aren't helpful. They charge a fortune for everything. There aren't even any souvenirs of Napoleon who was born there for you to buy because they hate Napoleon too. <laughs> they think Napoleon abandoned them after he became famous. Never mind, this isn't a... French class. Then there's Paris, the city of lights, midnight in Paris. You can always expand your horizons in Paris, meet new people, no end of places to go and things to do, and fine cuisine. I did that once, stayed a year, went to school. It did expand my horizons, but after a year of Voltaire, Moliere, Camus, and Sartre, I came home with a 10-year case of existential angst. Hardly a spiritual vacation. I guess there's always Baton Rouge, huh? Is Jimmy Swaggart still there? <laughs> How about a vacation that's free? No parking, no airport security, and $15 a day parking. And, if you, and you don't have to board your pets who won't eat while you're gone, and you have to pay to have them fed intravenously, like one of our members just told me about this week, Dr. Diane Mayer's dog. And no endless questions from your kids like, are we there yet? I suggest that you take a real spiritual vacation. You can go to heaven on earth. It's a fabulous destination. No suffering, much joy, abundance, and love, and peace. The peace that passeth all understanding. <laughs> I guess we're not there yet. <laughs> well, there's perfect health, harmony, and hope in every area of your life. Just think, a vacation with no stress, no chaos, no problems, because if we live on hev in heaven on earth, there are no problems. That's not a problem. Every everything and everyone is perfect. Issues become simply teachable moments. Grist for the mill to learn and grow from, but not problems. Why not? Because when we put on our Christ consciousness glasses for our vacation to heaven, we see ourselves and everyone else with love, compassion, and understanding that Jesus Christ, Buddha, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, and every great spiritual teacher has begged us to have for our own sake and to save the world. The world's way, corporate America, 
the egos, is to annihilate people and competition that are a problem. Heaven's way is to cooperate, find peaceful solutions, and love. The result, everyone grows, everyone's happier, and everyone's healthier in all ways. So let's look at this destination, heaven on earth, that you can reach right now, right where you are sitting in your seat today, this minute. This summer might be your chance to take a spiritual vacation that will save your life, certainly will change your life. We talk about heaven on earth, living like the Christ, every single Sunday in Sunday school classes and church. Hopefully, we've all got it intellectually now. Looking out here at you all, I know that's true. But these are just ideas that we study. A spiritual vacation involves more than just knowing and even agreeing with some of these fascinating and noble ideas. Just listening to and reading about them is like looking at travel brochures. A spiritual vacation involves really going to that destination. So how do we go on a spiritual vacation? First of all, you surrender. You surrender your ego. Just as you surrender your body to a plane when you're going to Paris and you trust that the pilot knows the way, you surrender your ego, your personal agendas to spirit to God. Let God guide your way to heaven on earth. You quit letting ego make decisions for you, those worldly decisions. You ask yourself at every single turn, am I living in my Christ consciousness here in this very situation, or am I letting my old ways, my worldly ways, my programmed ways determine my path? Result? No stress, no chaos, no complications. Live by the eternal laws of love and compassion, and there are no problems. Next, surrender your ego thoughts of personal failure. Let thoughts of your failure of any kind go. Any kind of weakness you think you have, any self-doubts, any fear, let them go on your spiritual vacation. You could hardly enjoy the start of your vacation if you fear that the pilot will lose control of the plane you're on every mile of the way. Every time a negative thought about you or someone else comes to mind, just push the delete button. It's just a thought. It is not you. It's your ego. It's the part of you that wants to live as a separate entity from God and your fellow man. It's what Adam and Eve succumbed to when they ate the apple in the Garden of Eden, which is a metaphysical symbol for what we all do many times a day. Surrender your ego. Be one with God and your fellow man. Let God drive your plane. You start having a zest for life, zeal, a joie de vivre, that those outdated program tapes block. And don't judge yourself for your former choices. It's all part of the spiritual curriculum. We've all been there. Accept yourself. Accept others. Surrendering yourself to the divine all enables you to explore, experience new things and new people on your spiritual vacation. You expand your horizons by seeing everything new. Everything becomes new. And remember, no one ever expanded any horizons by looking at pretty pictures of Puerto Vallarta or San Francisco. You have to go there. <clears throat> like chocolate, you have to actually taste it to understand what it is, right? If there's some situation in your life that you're being pulled to deal with in old ways, take the God-given opportunity to make light years of spiritual progress by being a spiritual warrior and making the 
Herculean effort to choose God's path and not your egos for your own sake. We can all find opportunities to practice every day. Life presents them constantly. Taking a spiritual vacation means to actually take the trip to your spiritual destination and to do and talk and think as Jesus Christ would. Spiritual vacations are chances to really save your spiritual life. Just do it, please. It may seem hard at first, like learning to ride a bike, but it's the chance of a lifetime if you go to that holy place and leave your old life behind. Spend a couple of weeks at heaven on earth and you'll be a changed person. Like learning to ride a bike, it's something you'll never forget. That's what Jesus Christ meant by being reborn, being twice born. So what will it look like to take a spiritual vacation to heaven? One, well, first off, you'll meet your needs. Not the ones the world has programmed you to think will suffice, like fame, riches, or power, but you'll meet your real needs. What's behind all that? Happiness, love, security. You can start meeting your needs the moment you turn your life over to spirit, the divine, God, whatever you feel most comfortable calling this only power and presence in the universe. Just leave your ego behind, like your computer on a vacation, and it will be a glorious one. You'll realize that you don't need it. In fact, it will ruin your vacation like it will ruin your life. You may think it's gotten you somewhere so far. Like all the signs posted around my school say though, dare to think you're wrong. If you aren't completely happy and completely peaceful all the time, which is the way you should be, blame your ego. Board it at the vets. Send it to summer camp. Be a spiritual warrior and lock it up as a prisoner of war so that God can be your pilot. Thus you will spend quality time in heaven on earth. Without your ego, you can meet your real needs. You can be free of old, programmed, egotistical, narcissistic, fear-based ways of dealing with yourself and others so that you can skip along the beach in the wind with the waves and sun and moon and stars beautifying your life so that you can be fully present to the perfection and the beauty that abounds and not be lost in thoughts, your thoughts of past and future that do nothing but create fiction that blocks out the perfection of the moment. Yes, on your spiritual vacation, meet your real needs, not the worldly ones that we know from reading the tabloids often end up in unhappiness, various addictions, and loneliness. Two, expand your horizons on your spiritual vacation. Take a look at amazingly hard places to reach, like the Himalayas, of your mind, high places that you don't often trek to. You will see things and people you never ever imagined and you will return home a different person because of it. Do you all remember that classic novel, Lost Horizon by James Hilton? Anybody read it? Great. It's an allegory about a small group of people whose plane crashed in the Himalayan mountains. They made it through a steep, narrow pass to Shangri-La, utopia. The narrow path is the eye of the needle that is so difficult to go through to make it to a higher state of consciousness, the Himalayas of the soul. The novel is about those moments when we make the decision to choose the higher way, the higher path, the narrow mountain pass, 
which goes to Shangri-La, utopia, enlightenment. Actually, every moment offers us this opportunity. The pass is narrow, but open to all. It's really not that difficult to negotiate. It just takes a decision to go there. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. This means the path is open to all of us, but few of us will choose that path. Will we take it or revert back to the old ways of thinking, which will, by the way, lead to death? Because, as in the story, no one will escape the dangers of the freezing Himalaya snows alone. They had no choice but to go the distance. It was Shangri-La or death. Allegorically, the story is telling us that we have the choice to either live in the higher parts of our souls, our Christ consciousness, we call it at unity, or spiritual death, which leaves us symbolically cold, hungry, and lonely. If we choose the higher path, the Himalayas of the soul, we're enlightened. So expand on your spiritual vacation, expand your horizons all the way to the Himalayas of your soul. Even a week of living like that can change you forever. Three, do something new. Have a spiritual adventure. Someone once said there's adventure in all of our souls. If you aren't a meditator, Start sitting quietly in the silence, as Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore said, in the silence for 20 minutes a day. Fillmore suggested an hour. Morning is best, but any time is okay. Quiet your thoughts so that you can spend time alone within and conscious of the universal vibration, the divine or God. Sit in the silence. I would then suggest praying for 10 minutes before or after your meditation or at another time of the day. And by praying, I mean taking all your problems, issues, fears, and worries to God and asking to see them differently with Christ vision. Looking at problems through spiritually out of date, worldly or egocentric glasses will produce for you what a trip to Europe's magnificent cathedrals will do if you're nearsighted. You'll see one big blur. I did that one time. It's now a metaphor for my life, for all the times I did not use Christ vision glasses to grow through life. The art treasures of Europe, the cathedrals, and the magnificent monuments were indeed one big blur for me. I didn't understand why everyone was so enthusiastic about it or why my parents had spent their money on this venture. Of course, there was nothing wrong with the Mona Lisa. I just couldn't see what it was. On your spiritual vacation, ask God to help you see the reality of this world, heaven on earth. Last week's truth lesson was entitled, Our Fathers Who Art in Heaven, meaning our earthly fathers and our heavenly father, uh, both of whom are in heaven, if we see correctly, of course. This week, I'd like you to think about how we are all in heaven, on earth. If you spend at least 10 minutes a day in sincere prayer asking to see things differently, many, many things will clear up for you. Things will get simpler. Your spiritual vacation will bring you back rested, relaxed, happy, and feeling love for yourself and everyone else. Everyone in your life, because your vision will be corrected and you will be able to see the beauty, purity, and holiness in every situation and every person as Jesus Christ did, and as we can. Whatever I do, you can do also, and greater. Jesus said it, it's true. Ask God in your prayers to help you see differently, to see as the Christ. 
This is true prayer. And then, of course, stay tuned to the answers. If you turn on your radio, tune into NPR, and then go in the other room, you won't hear the news. Listen for God's answers in prayer. And if you are already a meditator and you pray regularly, try doubling your meditation and prayer time on your spiritual vacation. 20 minutes twice a day for meditation, 10 minutes twice a day for prayer. Or maybe for the second meditation, you can visualize some holy person like Jesus Christ and concentrate on incorporating his characteristics into you. If you go into the deep recesses of your mind and really look at everything you think, do, and say, and ask yourself if Jesus Christ would think, do, and say those things, you will be trekking through that narrow mountain pass to the Himalayas of your soul, Shangri-La. Ask God to help you change your thinking then your actions will change naturally and with no effort. It doesn't do much good to change our actions because if we don't change our thinking, things just happen and we revert back to the old ways. But when we change our minds, our actions will follow. On this spiritual vacation, turn your life over to God, physically, emotionally, and mentally to be healed and to live for just a few weeks as the Bible and every other spiritual path tells us to live in a state where God lights our way. As it said is in Psalms 1828, for thou wilt light my candle, the Lord will enlighten my darkness. On your spiritual vacation, read some spiritual books that you haven't given yourself time to read. Just plop yourself down, close the door. Don't answer the phone, texts, emails, and all those other things I don't understand for an hour at a time. Tell your family that you're on vacation and it isn't costing you anything, but nevertheless, you're on vacation during these certain times of the day. The result will make you easier to get along with, more loving and peaceful, and they and you will be grateful. This time off, the spiritual vacation will help you get closer to knowing as a Unity speaker here in this church, Unity, Jack Addington said, I quote, every problem known to man has an answer. Concealed within each problem is an opportunity for spiritual growth, resulting in greater understanding. The problem veils some hidden truth that must eventually be understood. Once this truth is discovered, it is as if a door is opened from within through which the student steps into a new and larger room. It has been said where we are tightest, there we need stretching. Life gives us with uncanny precision just the growth opportunities we need. We are given a choice. We can struggle with the problem and blame life, or we can bless the growth that it contains and set about to find the hidden truth that will unlock the door that leads to Shangri-La, our Shangri-La, our heaven, our peace, our utopia, our enlightenment. Taking a spiritual vacation helps us start seeing every moment of our lives as a learning situation. In Revelations 3.20 it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. It's up to us to open the door and let God come in and guide us. We have free will. It's probably one of the only things I ever questioned God on. Why did he give us free will? <laughs> but we have to open the door ourselves because we have it. 
for your spiritual vacation practice, start living in ways that are new. Don't just look at the travel brochures. Go to the destination. Go to, on the spiritual hikes. Build your spiritual muscles. Go on spiritual ropes courses. That is, be bold and live what you study and think about so that your spiritual skills will be quick and agile and you can better negotiate the rapids of your life and work on your canoe too, in which you negotiate those rapids. Get your body in tip-top shape, feed it nutritious foods, give it extra sleep, give it time to exercise and relax. Yes, take a spiritual vacation and you will return a changed person. You'll be reborn. Bob Dylan once sang, he not busy being born is busy dying. Like the plain wrecked people in James Hilton's book, Lost Horizon, who refused to negotiate the narrow path to the warmth, beauty, and security of Shangri-La. A spiritual vacation can jumpstart your whole life. It can help you be reborn. A new person, a better able to negotiate the narrow passes and future problems of your life. Yes, after your spiritual vacation of prayer, meditation, study, turning your life totally over to God for guidance and practicing living the teachings, you will return relaxed, peaceful, happy, and exuberant. Why? Because living this way erases fear, sadness, stress, the the spiritual eternal laws create a state of enlightenment, heaven on earth, joy, abundance, and peace. Spiritual laws don't deprive us of doing what we, we want. They are laws which enhance our lives and bring much happiness. Have you ever noticed how the Dalai Lama giggles all the time? When I was in India, we had 24-7 Dalai Lama channels in our room. And no matter how much I looked, it just seemed like he giggled all the time. He was just so happy. Jesus Christ didn't suffer from existential angst. <laughs> Spirituality and spiritual vacations result in profound happiness. Wouldn't you love to come home from your trip to heaven on earth better able to start living your whole life without ego, earthly conditioning, and suffering of any kind? To truly understand heaven, though, you have to go there. So on your spiritual vacation, I invite you to start looking into the deepest levels of your spiritual lives. See how to live as spiritual beings in all areas of your life so that there's no disconnect between spiritual life and regular life. And thus you will return refreshed, renewed, and ready to be baptized into a new world due to your vacation to heaven on earth. You all deserve it. Free yourselves from all that isn't perfect and everything that prevents your perfect happiness. For just a week or two, if that's all you have, let God guide your way in every way. Don't just read the brochures and think about it and talk about it. Try it. You'll never want to come home, but if you do, you'll bring a whole new person with you. And I, for one, would like to know about that. Please share that with me, if that's the case for you. I want to see your iPhone pictures of smiles and joy and peace. Bon voyage. Amen. <laughs>